If you want to talk about user interface design in Twitter, this is the right video for you. If not, you probably should shut this video now. Because yesterday evening on Twitter, I saw this new panel here, sneak a peek at the new Twitter. And so we're gonna take a look through the new Twitter and compare it to the old Twitter and comment on the good feet, the bad, and the ugly. Now, right after clicking on the take a look, I have another screenshot, you're taken to this panel here which is loading of the new interface, <clears throat> and there's a welcome panel. And unfortunately, although I had very high expectations for this new version of mobile Twitter, uh, admittedly, the panel here was a bit disappointing. We have both an exit button as well as a got it button, and obviously the exit button is very redundant and is far too um, dense and bold in relation to the rest of the panel. It draws your eye out of the center of the image. And let's just talk very briefly about this new upgrade here to the browser version of Twitter. Twitter has a mobile application. I've only used it on iOS, not Android, but the iOS Twitter client, or I guess Twitter application, I think is amazing. I think the user interface on it is uh, really well done. It's incredibly fast to navigate. And I've spoken in the past videos about some of the wonderful elements inside of that interface. Now, on the other hand, Twitter's interface that runs in the browser and that you can either load on a desktop or load on a mobile uh, tablet or phone uh, has needed a lot of work. And you've been able to see the improvements on the mobile uh, uh, phone version of the browser-based Twitter, but the desktop launched um, Twitter through you know Chrome or through Safari has been pretty lackluster for a number of years. Uh, not many improvements. The user interface is, from a design perspective, certainly not uh, you know the epitome of beautiful. Um, there's been very little innovation, and it's functional. But it's, it was exciting to see that Twitter's put out this new uh, revamp, and that's what we're going to walk through right now. And so what we have are two instances of Twitter. We're logged in here. I, my brother gave me the keys to his company's account. So we're logged into the old version of Twitter in this version of the Chrome browser. And then here we got the new version of Twitter logged in. And so here's the old version. It's an interface you're well familiar with. There's the central panel. Uh, you have the side panels, and then as you scroll, this is kind of what you see. Now let's look at the new version. All right, here it is. Well, the big difference is that we can see the uh, panel, the bar at the top, the navigation bar is significantly different, and the actual way that the action part of this web page interacts is significantly different as well. Right off the start, what we can notice is that in the old version of Twitter, as you would scroll through your feed, you could focus on the content in the middle of the screen. And this was actually a really nice experience. In the new version of Twitter, what we can see is that your content is now pushed over to the left, and you have to look at all of this space all the time. And what we see here is who to follow and trends for you, which in the past were only visible when you're at the top of the application, and the trends were as far out to the periphery of the application as possible. If you look at these words here, this is pretty much as far or as close to the edge of the application as anything else. And the fact that the text was in a colored uh, light pastel blue combined with the light gray of the subtext made this entire panel kind of fall off into the distance and it wasn't in your way. The who to follow panel was also on the edge uh, but if you look even compared to the size of the new who to follow panel, the old one was significantly smaller. The font size was smaller. It was less bold and obtrusive. Unfortunately, the new version of Twitter here is completely obnoxious with this who to follow and trends for you panel. It pr one provides, from my perspective, um, no particularly valuable information here. The trends, I couldn't care less about. And the who to follow are people that I have no idea why I would follow them. Um, and so we have two problems. One, we have information which I don't care about. 
And two, it's being displayed in the most prominent real estate of the application. And unlike before, at least when you would scroll down, you would not have to see, contend with this. Now it uh, is fixed on the screen here. And so it's always there. And I'm just looking at the way that this interacts as you scroll up and down. One of the things which I don't really like is how um, jagged this scr scrolling is. Um, as you can see, it just kind of locks into place. I think it would have been better if um, instead of um, locking into place, if there was a bit more elasticity on the panel. So when you pushed it up, see, I think this is just my browser actually. Let me try reloading it. There we go. But as you can see, when you scroll up and down, it has a hard stop on the top and on the bottom. And if, and the diff, the problem is that the content on the left continues to scroll. And so it would be nicer if this panel on the right, these panels here, when you actually got to the endpoints, were a bit more elastic and would slow down a little bit uh, before they came to a halt, rather than being uh, so jagged as they are right now. Now, if we uh, compare the experience of scrolling, as we mentioned, we have all this garbage here um, in our way. And what we can find here is that when we click on a particular panel, if we want to expand that thread, we are taken away from the thread and it loads it in a new page and then we can view the responses below. And now if we want to go back to the feed we are viewing, we have to click back and then we can continue. And so this is, I believe, a significant step backwards compared to the old version of Twitter, where if you wanted, you could um, click on a particular thread. It would view that tweet in a pop-up and then you could scroll through the uh, modal, which is an overlay, read it, and then just click anywhere outside of that to return to the thread. And so it never felt that you were having to lose uh, track of where you are because you could click a tweet, view the contents, view the comments, and then click with one click to be back to where you last were. Whereas the problem with this new version is twofold. One, psychologically, you're actually changing pages, which makes it feel that you're breaking from the thread that you're trying to read. And second, and this is more important, it's actually much more difficult to go back. Now, if the user does not have a trackpad that's enabled with gestures, you are unable to just swipe to the left. This means that you actually have to take the mouse and go all the way up to the back button and then click on it just in order to go back to where you were before. Whereas before, as we were pointing out, you could just click anywhere off of the screen. The other problem is that as we, if you were using a keyboard, a sort of a mouse, you would again have to, uh, you couldn't just click off of the pop-up, you would have to uh, physically go back to this button. Now, some people have mouse with the smart uh, toggle, which allows you to tab uh, forward and backwards in web browsers. But I do think that this is a step backwards. It's obvious why this decision was made when you think about how the app responds on a tablet or mobile environment. In this case, you can see the uh, when you click on it, it makes sense to load it as its own page, which you click back on. But I do think that the reaction when loading on a desktop or at least a full screen with browser, uh, would it be nice to preserve the existing pop-up modal? Now, let's go and take a look at the top panel here. So in the old version, we'll just put them side by side. In the old version, it was using icons with text to describe it. 
And that's really been, for the most part, the major trend in the last few years is to move away from just icons to be having much more descriptive um, text on the icons. Just And so some may view this as a step backwards. We see that the user has their full name being displayed in the top right, which I don't know if it's entirely rational to have the user's entire name being displayed because the user knows who they are based on the picture of the icon, the profile picture, and you could display at least maybe just the first name if you imagine someone might have multiple accounts using the same icon. But to display um, the first and last name seems to be taking up, in my opinion, valuable real estate that could use be used better in the top. Now, when you click on this down arrow, you see that a panel comes in from the right. And so displaying this as a down arrow doesn't seem like it's the right icon to have here, given that the motion is coming in from the right. In the old version, this was a uh, menu which would pop up when you click on here. And the content of the menu, if you, we compare the two, is a little bit different. Uh, the, the word account info is being placed at the top of this menu, which I think is useless. It doesn't convey any particular information. And so from a space perspective, it would make more sense to put the user's identifying information in large text at the top, kind of similar to how it was before. And then as we see, we have things like profile list, bookmarks, and moments. If a key part of this redesign was to try to encourage the use of things such as lists, bookmarks, and moments, in this new version, those key action items are pretty far away down this panel. They're kind of mixed in the middle here. And so part of the way which they could be highlighted would be to remove a lot of this information. In, the, in this new version, it's also displaying the number of followers you have and uh, who's following you in this hidden side panel. And I think that's a bit of a step backwards. In the old version, you were able to see every time you log into Twitter, a panel which showed you your, your name, the number of tweets, followers, and following. And so this information was always present whenever you logged in, which is, I think, information people might have been interested about. And so again, to hide this behind the side panel, not only is it a step back from the way which you used to be able to view it, but it also pushes down critical action buttons that we want people to press. Now, I'm not sure the best way around this, but if you're on a screen where you're unable to actually see the bottom of this list, it's not entirely intuitive that this side panel can be scrolled. And so I'm not sure if there needs to be uh, some sort of a pop-up icon which appears if there's still information below that you can, or a small down arrow which you can click to suggest that there's information off screen. Why don't we actually load up the settings panel on both of these and compare them. I just have to uh, shrink the size of the viewer here so that it, um, there we go, settings and privacy. Here, we'll just take this one off screen for a second. And it's back. So there we go. And we're, we'll do the same on this one. We'll go to settings and privacy. And here it is again. So you can see there's been significant changes between the two, for the most part, for the good. In the old version, there was a few major problems when you load the settings and privacy panel. One, this menu here has just exploded over the years and is quite long. And so it's been simplified down. I think that's a step in the right direction. This blob of garbage, which finds itself throughout most of the user interface and Twitter in prominent visual locations, has been, uh, in this case, entirely uh, removed. And the actual interface of these radio buttons and checkboxes is much more uh, friendly to tablet and touch environments. As you can see, you can, you can tap anywhere inside. Well, hmm, you can't tap anywhere. You can only tap on the, oh, this is, it would be nice if you could tap anywhere inside of the box containing this particular checkbox. It looks like you have to tap on the particular description. The uh, subtitle doesn't work, but 
Um, that's something which could be improved upon. And one of the other areas which it could certainly be improved upon is how it's being indicated which of these side panels is active. As you can see, the active side panel is that which is in a color which is almost the same as the background. And so if you take a step back, it's not very obvious that this is the selected panel because it's conflicting with, the, there's no contrast from the background. There's also, the text is the exact same text as the rest of the list. You can see in the past, the text was in bold, and although there was no change to that particular rose color, it was very obvious which of these panels you were inside. They've introduced another element, placing an underline uh, vertically at the edge here, which I think just makes it a little bit more busy than it should be. I really like the old version of Twitter when you would hover over their menu and it would turn this intense Twitter blue. And I don't think it's over the top, this coloring. I think that it looks crisp, it's clear and legible, and to be able to copy the same theme could have been used in this part of the application here. I also think that these headers at the top with the word, the, just the general placement of the framing of this page could be improved. We have the word settings on the same level as the word privacy and safety, and then my account name is for some reason here at the above of this list, and then there's another header above this list. There's just too many headings and too many headers and not uh, structured well enough. Again, when we move into mobile mode, it makes a lot more sense, the particular interface. Those words privacy and safety now are up here and it just makes a lot more sense, but it hasn't really been properly refined for the desktop version of the software. Let's move back here to Twitter and look at these buttons at the top. In the old version, we have an underline which appears when you hover over it as well as the background color changing to blue of the text and the icon. And as you uh, look to click on the other tabs, the underline follows with you. And that was, you know, nice element. In this new version, we still have the underline, but now we have a circle appear on these four icons. And that circle follows the element which is being used elsewhere in the software. As you can see when you hover over this icon, there's a circle. Same with these icons and with this icon. And so this circle uh, transparency, which is the hover effect, is nice. However, placing it on these icons in the primary menu is actually a bit discongruent because if we open up an actual file for a person, we have another menu here with it, which has, similar to this menu, a line with a blue underline. And so it's the same menu, but we have a, clearly a rectangular box. And so it may have made more sense to make sure that whatever is being done here matches the interface up here. We see as well the same type of interface being used under notifications where we have the rectangular box and uh, I believe the same is also being used in um, messages. No, it doesn't look like. But that's that part of the element. What we'll do now is we'll move into looking at an actual uh, file. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a search for a user. And we're going to load up the same user in both counts. Now, we see that the search panel has been widened in the new version and we're stacking the search results one on top of each other, which probably is better for um, touchscreen interfaces. And I think they look overall fine. Now let's just load up. So we've got one loaded here and we'll load up the same user here. Let's compare the old Twitter which is here, to the new Twitter, which is here. Just give it yourself a second to look at both of them. We have new user landing page and the old. We can change the width a little bit if you want. Now, 
What's the difference between them? In the old version, every user was able to actually have a unique identity and a unique landing page. You can see that there was a header, that there was a certain amount of customization of the left panel related to your demographic information. And you could, and this was, I would call it Twitterism. Each user could actually set what color all the links on their page were. And, you know, you would think, you know, for the most part, most, you know, all the way up to the tweet button, to the alerts, this was all uh, customizable based on the particular user's preference. Now, generally, I think most people would say that this is probably something you don't want to introduce into your software, this much variation in the ability on how the buttons and links display on every page. But this was kind of a Twitterism, in my opinion. This was something that no one else did. This is something that Twitter did. And so I don't think that it had to be phased out in this new version, um, just because it's a bit atypical. This new version is, of course, now much more conventional. The user can no longer change uh, the color of their links. And in fact, the user's particular profile page really falls to the background. Before you had the presence that you were in a particular user's page, um, as you can see, you saw their name at the top of the screen when you scrolled, uh, you, and it was very obvious the context of the, the page that you were in. In the new version, we have a much smaller header. The total amount of space being dedicated to this particular user is only this small percentage of the screen. All this here is kind of garbage. Right, because we're now, remember, we're mentally blocking out essentially anything which is placed into this part of the screen because it's information which is uh, not important or relevant to me. And um, I think that's a bit, there's been something lost in this new version. In the new version, also, when you scroll, you really have no idea what you're scrolling inside because there's no context up at the top anymore of a locking menu which shows the person's name and the number of tweets and followers. In the new version, we also no longer know how many tweets the person has had, that information is hidden, or how many likes they have. Um, we do see how many followers they have. You can also see that the new version has been formatted, you know, primarily to work on this a small mobile phone, but it doesn't really work well on a tablet, and it certainly doesn't work well on a desktop with regards to how this left panel identifying data is being stacked. As you can see, in the old version, it made sense the way that all of this was stacked with the user's icon being very large, look how much smaller it is now. You had their name in large text with good spacing between it and the underlying text. Uh, this text here had a bit more line spacing between it. And as you can see, people write in short, stochastic, few, sent few word sentences, which lend themselves to being in a very narrow um, column. But by extending this narrow column into a long line, it's visually much harder to read. It's harder to jump to the next line, and it doesn't look as good. Again, here you have information such as websites, locations, join date, all things which work well stacking up uh, along the left margin here, which have been crammed into one single line. And then that interesting information about tweets and followers, which used to be prominent and in the center, has also been crammed here. We also lose the ability to, uh, in the old version, it would show the number of followers that you knew and display them using uh, appropriately sized uh, user icons and uh, profile pictures. And you could hover over them to actually see the details of that particular follower. In the new one, it's, and they would panel. So I think it would go about uh, four people across. And I think sometimes does it go three or four rows down? I, I can't remember when you have a lot of followers in common. In the new version, the icons are so small that for the most part, you can't tell what it is. So you've got garbage here because it's not processable data. So it's 
therefore not communicating. And instead of seeing a familiar picture that triggers uh, an emotion of someone that you know, you are having to read words and you're having to read their name, which is spelled out. And so in this new version, rather than being able to fit multiple round appropriately sized profile pics into the space, right? You could imagine tiling 12 circles into here probably. Instead, all that we're seeing is one, two, we see two people's names listed instead of 12 actual uh, friendly faces. And one thing which I don't like is when people are putting emoticons or emojis into their uh, Twitter uh, names. And so I, I actually think that it would look better if Twitter stripped out these emojis and displayed just the text when they would produce uh, people that you have in common that are following. We um, haven't discussed yet, well, let's look at the rest here. In the old version, uh, people would post images and those would be piled in the bottom left and it would show you how many photos and videos that person has posted. In the new version, it's been highlighted to a prominent position in the top right, but without the data like before to actually show how many uh, photos and pictures are inside of this panel. Now, we also note that this is Twitter. It's not Instagram, it's not Pinterest, it's not some website where people primarily post beautiful photos or useful photos or photos that work well in quilts. Instead, people post a lot of news clippings, um, articles, uh, things which look good when they're in small icons like this, but don't really translate well into something that you want to tile across your header. Now let's open this up and we're gonna look here in the new version. Here's new Twitter showing these particular uh, images. And now let's look at old Twitter and look at the same images. And so here's old Twitter looking at the same images. All right, so this is a huge problem in this new version. So in the old version, what we can see is that the navigation for the image, the left, the right button, and the exit were outside of the perimeter of the image. They respected the image. The new version does not respect the image whatsoever and lays these buttons sloppily on top of the underlying content, obscuring it. So th that these would be much better suited outside of the content. In the old version, the background dimmed more. In the new version, it does not dim the background sufficiently. And in the old version, you also had the ability to hover over a content piece to see the des description, to see what the caption was when someone wrote this, what the actual tweet read. And then if you don't want to read the tweet, you can move your icon off screen off of the image. In the new version, we've gone backwards. There is no ability to actually view what the tweet content was when this image was tweeted. You have to now click on the new button which has been added, so one extra click, then you have to click view tweet. And then it takes you to this uh, dead end page, which is what I'm calling this uh, page which we discussed earlier, which um, is how they're d displaying the Caption. So now you can click uh, back, and then you can click to the next picture, and then you can click to the top right, and then you can click view tweet, and then you can read the comment, and then you can click back, and then you can click next, and then you can click here, and then you can click, and then you can see it, and then you can read, and then you can click. And so I'm, this is a, really a step backwards when you think about the old version. The information's here. There is no clicking required, and you can toggle it on and off just through hover. The old version uh, could have been cleaned up with the placement of the exit button. I think that it is better if it would have been placed aligned to the edge of the content rather than locked to the top right. Um, but that's a minor feature uh, compared to these other errors. You'll also notice that in this new version, as you shift through images down here, you've got a slot machine going on of the numbers uh, turning over every single time you change the picture. 
And this drives me nuts. Uh, you know, there's been a huge movement in the last, uh, you know, it feels like just a recent few years to add more and more animation to uh, websites of which almost all the animation is pointless. It doesn't convey anything of particular uh, value as far as new information. And in fact, uh, from my perspective, is a visual distraction, right? I don't need my eye to be distracted when I'm trying to look at the content of what someone's produced to essentially this useless data of how many uh, likes and followers and retweets it has. It's data you're interested to see, but it's not data that should actually distract your eye visually because it's animating when you're trying to look at more interesting data. And so I think these animations should be removed. We should go back to having the caption display on top of the image based on hover uh, with better dimming on the background. Now, if we want to actually comment on the image, let's take a look. We can comment. It's reasonably well preserved in both cases. We can, as you can see, we can fill out a tweet box here or we can fill out a tweet box here. So we'll exit this, we'll exit this. Now, here we are, we're back to the main page. And what I would like to go into discussing now is a um, few other features. What you can notice on this version of Twitter is that when you hover your icon over these different panels, the underlying content is instantly responsive it turns blue right when you get there, right? Same with follow. You put your cursor over, the follow button happens. You put your cursor over, it immediately changes. Uh, there's a slight delay on these, but otherwise it's a responsive system. In the, and that was the old version. In the new version of Twitter, you've got this delay, which is slow and sloppy. It's not, it doesn't feel responsive as you move your cursor throughout. And because why? Because they've increased the animation speeds. Um, thinking that animation is adding something. You know, again, there's, feels like there's a slight delay. I would just go through and get rid of almost all of it. Um, I don't think it adds too much. Now, let's look here. When in the old version, when you, Raphael's not a good example. Let's see here. Here we go. So in the old version, when you would hover over a user's name, it would show this box about the user. It had their heading, their picture. It's well structured, this content. It shows people that uh, are in common. You have tweets, followers, and following, and the descriptive text. And this is unique for each person. It, um, it, it, it's well structured. It looks good. And it, it conveys a certain sense of uniqueness about the individual, as well as a clear structure in the way that the information is displayed. In the new version, we have, let's go and compare the same. This is what the new version looks like. And this looks really like a step back. In fact, a bit surprised this went into the production. We have one, a box with a radial or sorry, a radius on it, which is so large, it's almost laughable. It's got a bit of a funny shadow on as far as compared to the other elements being used in the software. And we've lost the unique sense of identity because we're no longer displaying the header image. I mean, you do wonder if Twitter is trying to get rid of header images uh, in the long run, just given the fact that they have shrunk the size of it on your own personal page and they're no longer displaying it in this pop-up. And the uh, information is structured in a really shoddy manner. The, the line spacing and font sizes just don't look right. Uh, we have, instead of having those three unique data points, which were nicely structured at the bottom, uh, anchoring the bottom of this panel, you know, there's a good structure into this panel, just the way it's integrated because the, uh, the profile picture cuts through the middle of this banner. You've got three columns, you've got a large column. It just looks well structured. This new one has no structure to it. It's just left justified as if someone wrote an HTML block without any particular formatting um, or thought. And so this is an area which needs some work. Why don't we go and tweet right now? 
Now, in the old version, it was very obvious to tweet because you could just tweet from up here. Done. And in the new version, you can tweet, but you have to be very cognizant about where you're tweeting from. If you're ever inside of a piece of content, um, and you go and click the bottom right button, you might hit the reply button. And if you're in a narrower version, it looks like this. And you want to make sure that you're actually on this icon, because if you're in this icon, you're replying to that piece of work. But if you're in this icon, you're now composing a unique tweet. Now, let's load these up side by side. Oh, as you can see, the old Twitter had a lot of trouble with responsive mode. So there we go, we have to, there we go. All right, actually, why don't we just go to, back to the native uh, page so we can move away from Edward Tuffy's red icons. All right, there we go. Now we're comparing apples to apples. Oh, interesting. Did I click reply or did I click tweet to get this? Oh, yeah, this is weird. So, so if you're inside of a dead end panel, and you click the tweet button just quickly, you're gonna be only able to reply to it. If you're on someone's page and, you're, and you think, oh, I just wanted to tweet something, and you click tweet, it's actually gonna tweet your tweet as a direct reply, meaning that it's not gonna actually appear in your tweet panel. And so you have to then click to get out of all that, and now back to your home page to initiate a tweet. And this seems far too cumbersome given that, you know, when you think about an activity you would want to increase in your user base, which is tweeting uh, unique tweets. The way that it, the amount of hurdles you have to go in this new version seems a bit misplaced. Let's look now carefully at the old and at the new uh, tweet composition windows. In the new one and the old, they both ask what's happening. We can start to write as we do, and as we um, right, we still see that this icon here fills in as you write too many words. Now we'll compare to the old version, and in the old version, that icon, which completes and it's uh, filling in as you write, let me just get rid of this, there, it was actually integrated into the writing window. And so this meant that Visually, it was actually much closer to your central vision that you were going over and that you were approaching your limit versus this version. Because if you're writing up here, um, you have to actually look separately to get this into your central vision. And so the old version was much more intuitive and easy to see your progress as you wrote. You can also see the difference in that this new Tweet Composer seems to have a bug that it always requires there to be a significant amount of blank space between the bottom of the tweet and this line here. And that's because um, it's just how it is. Whereas in the old version, there was a margin along the far right edge, but you never uh, brought text on there. Now the text is coming into this margin, and so they've had to move out one of the circles and then bump down the emoji. One of the things you'll notice is that in the new version, or in the old version, it would always show you how much you were over. The data was there as well as it was the angry red circle. The new version drops the angry red circle and only shows you the numbers. And that's because the number itself is trying to be displayed from within the circle and it doesn't go higher than two digits. And so I, I think in some ways this is a step back, you know, bring this information up into the box and then uh, just display the count beside it as before. Well, let's add a tweet. Now, one of the things in the old version was that your action button, which was to actually tweet, was in the bottom right, which I think is an intuitive place to place the action buttons on a particular piece of software. Unfortunately, Twitter has moved the action button here to being up in the top right. 
And so I think some way find this confusing because they would instinctively go to the bottom right for action and find that they find this plus. And instead of being able to submit or add this to their tweets, they just keep getting boxes to add more and more tweets. Um, and so the workflow you should be, you work and then you come to the bottom and then you click and you proceed to the next. Um, one of the things I really don't like is the styling of the new editor. It's just far too busy. This thick line underneath each box is a bit excessive. Um, it's also slow when you click. It's not very, resp I wish it was a lot more snappy um, when you clicked between boxes. And the font, the text here fades out a bit too much to be able to read this nicely. And here, for some reason as well, the emoji button doesn't hide when you're no longer in that window. As you can see, in this case, the emoji button is only present when you're actually able to add an emoji to that uh, thread. And so this probably should hide as well. Um, now, one of the other uh, disadvantages is in the old version, you could compose a tweet, and if you didn't like it, you could just click the trash can beside that tweet and remove it from the thread. In the new version, if you want to remove it, you have to remove all the text from your, your tweet and then you can click ex exit, which seems uh, a bit excessive. Now, one of the let's go through these icons. In the old version, they were hideously styled because you had this square with a gradient that came over it as if we're living you know, many years ago in user interface design. But it was nice because you had this instructive bubble which would appear above the icon. In the new version, we've dropped the location uh, and we have a circle which appears over each icon, which probably makes sense given the that this is being used everywhere else in the app. It would be good though if the information which was displayed above these icons also was displayed above the icons here. And thus, compare now uh, some of these functions in both of the two tweet windows. We'll click Add Emoji, and we'll click here Add Emoji. And so let's compare the difference between the two. Well, what we can see is that in the, oh, my Windows, it's having trouble with the scaling here. We'll just go back to scale out. The main difference between them is that the side navigation bar, which would respond as you scroll down in a very intuitive manner, and think of course you could click and it would jump there, is now being placed at the top. And we've added an additional uh, indicator to show you where you are. I think it's a little bit awkward uh, to scroll up and down and to have this change left to right. It's certainly doable and lots of tools do that, but I don't see the necessity for it given that in the past you definitely had a left panel here and um, it just seemed to work. So I'm not sure if this is really a step forward. As far as being able to ch select skin color, um, it seems reasonable to hide the options behind uh, the circle as we see here, and the circle is blue around it so that you know you can click on it. I think it was a good step forward, removing the shadow on the checkbox. The checkbox actually seems a little bit easier to see in this version even without the shadow. And now let's compare what happens when you highlight over the actual emoji. In the old version, the emoji would grow so that you could more easily understand, uh, see the uh, emoji icon. In the new version, you can hover over the emojis, but in order to see it up close, you have to divert your eyes from where you're looking, which might be here, all the way down to this bottom left. And so it actually makes it rather tricky because if you want to scan, your eyes look here and then looks here, then you look 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 here. And so your eyes are darting back and forth as you're trying to look for emojis. I wonder if they actually did um, timing, like giving this to people and say, hey, uh, add a emoji of a sea creature, of a sea dragon, and then see how long it takes people to find it. 
using the old method versus the the new method. I think it would be nicer if in the old emoji picture the emojis got a little bit larger. And there's ways which you could have handled this with that emoji um, touching the emojis beside it. Whoa. Does it not tell us anymore what this emoji is an emoji of? Well, that's silly. I think for people who don't really understand what this emoji is meant to convey, neutral face, face without mouth, like I think having the descriptor appear was a good idea. And so removing the description of what this is supposed to be, uh, I think you, again, lose something. Uh, we'll go in and we'll click to add this emoji. We'll click to add this emoji. Very good. How does the search work in the two of them? We have an X here, even though there's nothing to X. So the fact that we aren't viewing the X right away is good. We're going to just type in a search and we're going to type in another search. In the old version, you can see that the searches were grouped together based on their feature or their group. Uh, in the new version, it's all displayed as one block. And it's probably reasonable just to display it all as one block. There's really not that many emojis we're searching through. But the thing which really doesn't make sense is, and this is probably something to the way that this is coded, but these two items, the two umbrellas, should be adjacent to each other. Whereas here, the umbrellas are separated. Same with the weather patterns, they're not adjacent to each other. And so I agree with grouping the search results, but let's display the search results grouped in the rational manner. And then how do we exit this? There should be a little X, just like in the old version. Or, right? I don't want to have to now pull out the keyboard and back, back, back. There we go. All right, we have talked about the emoji picker. Why don't we talk about now the add a GIF, add a GIF. All right, wow, <laughs> wow. Okay, so the old GIF edition panel was objectively horrible from a, and horrible because this white border creates a really nasty grid um, it's a nasty grid, and the panels all have a really thick uh, opacity over them, some sort of black-gray opacity, making the underlying GIFs look very uh, dull and boring. And, and so you have the composition of um, ugly-looking GIFs and an ugly-looking framework to hold them in. The new framework is able to display the GIFs uh, much more intensely and bright, making them look more interesting to click. And they have fortunately uh, uh, got rid of the outer border. And as you can see, it was not necessary. Now we're going to click on agree, and we're going to click on agree, and let's compare the two again. Yeah, so, so the old one was certainly nothing to write home about. It was having uh, this thick border between all the images, which uh, was is unnecessarily, uh, and the new one actually looks really good. It looks almost as good as uh, Google Images, or if you have Google Photos, sorry, not Google Images, Google Photos on the photo album there. This is what this reminds me a lot of. And I think Google Photos does a great job in their album of tiling images. You know, again, based off a lot of Edward Tuffy's writings, which the, with the importance of having very, very thin uh, dividing lines. So, and it seems he's even gone in recent years to loving the idea of quilting, which it removes uh, the dividing lines entirely. And you'll notice when you uh, put this into a tablet or into a mobile mode that uh, this panel looks really good, right? You have edge-to-edge -edge content, the outer edge, uh, yeah, edge to edge content. There's no borders. Uh, you really are able to appreciate the content uh, and look for what you're interested in. So, congrats. Now, let's just open this up again so we can go back. How come it's not? Ah, oh, there it is. All right. Now, why don't we compare the um, one more of these here? The add a poll. We haven't compared that in both cases. Ah, oh, okay. All right. So let's look at these two. The old version of Twitter 
used rounded edges. They had a radius on most things, but the radius throughout most of the icons, uh, most of the boxes was reasonably congruent. It was about the same. It wasn't over the top. It, it looked fine. The new version loves going over the top in the radius on a lot of things. And uh, the thing which is a bit annoying is this radius is different than, it feels that all, there's different radius at every level of this. And this one here has no radius. Um, and then we saw what the hover looked like when you would click on uh, a hover panel over a user and they had a huge radius. And so I think that needs to be uh, simplified and uniform throughout the, the application. Now, again, as I was mentioning earlier, I felt that the overall uh, the design of this panel system is looking far too uh, busy with these horizontal underlines. And you can see that, again, this busyness is being uh, exacerbated by the way that the polling panel has been designed. And so in the old poll panel, you'd have, a, it said choice one, and then when you wrote in your choice, that descriptor would move. And here, under choice two, that would be there. And then if we wanted to add a choice, the button was underneath, again with the descriptor choice three, and then choice four. There we go. And in the new version, we have in much, you need much more horse, uh, vertical height to accomplish the same because you got all this space between the top of choice one and the top of this box. Um, not entirely sure why it's there. And then when you type in your choice one, it has all the space between the top of your text and the top of this choice one box because the word choice one does not disappear. We're also being provided uh, information which is not particularly helpful, which is how many characters we've completed, right? In the old version, if you talked, if you typed too much, it just turned red, right? You know, this is the same principle which is being applied in the rest of the composition thread. In the new version, if you type too much, you get a red underline and the word choice one goes red. You know, I've seen this in a lot of Luke W's work, but this is this is not showing a simple generic error message saying that the content is invalid and that's why this needs to go red. The specific error message which is being conveyed is that there's too many characters. And so the way to convey that the content has too many characters isn't to have the underline around your content change color. It's to actually show you, as Twitter has done for years, the, the characters which are in excess. And so in some ways, by having a less quantitative descriptor, rather than showing the actual number, oh, you know, this one here is nine characters over, so that tells me exactly how much to take out. Well, no, it would just be better if it turned red and then you deleted the stuff that was red, um, just as you did before. And if this wasn't intuitive enough and people were having trouble, you could have maybe this appear on the side and turn red all at the same time. Um, but I think this is just taking up space and it's conveying less information than in the past. In the past, you all, now let's go and add an additional choice. I don't think the plus sign should be here. I think it should be like the old version where it actually said, add a choice. Adding a choice is a crucial step in this case. And that information should be logically here because we're adding the choices down here. We aren't adding the choices out this way. It's being added this way. And so the added the choice button in this case made sense and had text to explain to the user what it was. And so we have now reached uh, the bottom of the poll and we have poll length. Before it was very clear, it was almost always a day. And if you really wanted, you could click and you could change it. In the new version, we can still click and change it, but rather than placing all this information on one line, as it easily could, look at all this dead space at the end of each of these boxes, is being relegated to two lines. Now, two lines does make sense if you were to compress this down to a small mobile screen, um, but the fact, but this could easily just um, be programmed to be on one line and then have a line break come after the word pole length if the screen got too narrow. And we we're, look at all this busyness with this dark gray line underneath everything. It's really ugly and hideous. In the old version, right, you just put a box 
which was colored a different color around your active field. And it's very obvious where you are. I think that style would have been much better than placing uh, multiple thick lines uh, throughout the entire visual display. We've also uh, gone backwards because in the old version, you could remove a particular choice if you didn't like it just by clicking the X. Whereas now, um, let me just see, how would I, if I didn't like this, how do I get rid of this choice? How do I get rid of this choice? I'm not entirely sure if I can delete them. Uh, one thing which I haven't used Twitter polls, or maybe I've done it once, I can't remember, but I want to know, do I get to choose the order that my options display in, or is it gonna be randomized? If it's gonna be randomized, just tell me, you know, order will be randomized, um, whereas here it gives the illusion by saying choice three, choice two, choice one, by having the sequential numbering of the choices, it gives the illusion as if I'm actually picking the order of the choices for my tweet. And if it is true that you do pick the order, then you should be able to click on one of these and pull it up or slide it down and have the two choices uh, change position and be able to shuffle them. Um, and if you can't change the order, don't make it feel as if someone's actually selecting the choice order and just explain that to the user on the screen. And then here it says remove poll, which is very obvious. And here we've removed the obvious and we've put, instead of an X, we've put an X inside of a small box, inside of a box, inside of a box with a different rate rounded edge. All right, um, again, if, as we mentioned earlier, I, this old version of Twitter where the, um, the tweet all was down here, made a lot more sense. Um, why don't we exit this tweet and why don't we exit this tweet? See, I never liked how thick this line was, this joining line in the old version. I think they're getting better in the new version with this being thinner. Um, but I wonder if it could actually go a, a little bit thinner or, or, or lighter. It's just not optimized properly the way that these get joined together. So we're gonna click that and we're gonna click here. Discard this thread. Are you sure you want to discard this thread? Discard, cancel. Discard thread. You can't undo this and you'll lose your draft. Yes, discard, cancel. I do like that they're going to more descriptive buttons in this case, such as saying yes, comma, discard. I think that's the right direction on how to approach this situation because the word cancel can be a bit ambiguous. Are we discarding it? Or are we canceling discarding it? And we've also removed the ambiguity of having an exit button and a cancel button all at the same place. So we're getting better in this case. We're gonna cancel and we're gonna, oh wait, sorry, I want to discard the thread. So it should say, yes, discard thread. No, don't, no, continue drafting or something. I don't know. Sorry, yes. Do you want to discard? Discard. All right, I think I've discarded the thread. In the old version here of Twitter, you, what you'll notice is that there was an icon for for the Twitter bird, and it was on the main screen, and I like that. I think that was a good part of the old version of Twitter. In the new version, there actually is no particularly unique Twitter branding on here, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, right? There's The Twitter bird's not here, other than the blue here and the blue here, you don't really feel that you're in, quote, Twitter. And so, of course, you know, the the URL icon up here aside. And so I think it would have been nice to reinstate that. One thing which is a bit of a downer when you um, put this into a more narrow mode. So, so I, I like how this is responsive when you're on a tablet. Um, as you can see here, it responds as it as it should hiding the header and showing these tabs. And so this is gonna work out well uh, on devices. And when you click search, you have the ability to search. It shows you the trends. This is very much the same as on the mobile application. And so, th so this looks okay on, um, on mobile. But one thing which should be improved is that when you're in this experience, you can't search 
from this panel. The only panel you can search from is this one. If you're in notifications, you can't search. And if you're in messages, you can't search. And so you can see that there's a significant amount of space on the right side of each of these panels. And so there would have been space to be able to retain you know, a search panel which initiated from the far right margin out to a certain extent. And this, this, this small widget here could have been hidden somewhere else. I don't think it's actually conveying much. And so I, I do think that you should be able to search from whenever you are in the app, no matter how narrow of a window is, you should always be able to search you should always be able to tweet. And it looks like the new version of Twitter makes it so that you cannot always search and you cannot always tweet. And so, again, that seems like a step backwards. Why don't we compare um, the messaging threads uh, of the two products? And so we're going to go into messaging. Here we go. So as you can see, in the old version, or sorry, in the new version, the message thread definitely looks more like a standard messaging uh, interface. You Here's the old version on the right. There, This is just a pop-up. It's not making optimal use of the space, whereas this new version is clearly mobile-friendly and optimized, and we can see that you have a uh, lock to the bottom of the screen, the text entry, you can go back to the previous messages. But one thing which you want to pay attention to is that in the old, in this new version, once you start typing, do you see that? The emoji icon, which is crammed in here, these icons, they're just crammed in, like, ugh, look at the, the hover um, circles, they overlap and they aren't meant for this box, it's too crammed. Um, when you start typing, it disappears. And so this emoji probably should have been inside, kind of like before or on the left side. And instead of having a very obvious and intuitive um, button that said send, as in the past, this, this arrowhead or, well, it's obviously a paper airplane or something, but the, the, the obvious has been replaced with the less obvious, which is unfortunately a trend throughout the entire app of removing uh, buttons which have descriptive text on them and replacing it with uh, icons. And so it's just a small thing in this case, which I think could have been uh, fixed up. All right, why don't we go back now to the main page and search. So we're gonna search here for Edward, uh, let's just search for Edward Snowden. And right before I pull up, now of course in the old, in the new version of Twitter, I have, I can go here, Edward Snowden. And so, there we go. And so we're gonna click Edward Snowden. I'm gonna click, oh, sorry. Edward Snowden. So let's compare the search results for these two versions. In the new version, we see that it's very hard for your eye to quickly identify what type of a page you're looking at. This is a search result page, and we know that in part because we have a blue underline underneath this, and we have the words Edward Snowden here in the top left. But this particular part of the interface is obscured by all the garbage over here, right? The who to follow and trends for you are as bold and obnoxious of the actual search content which I care about. Compare this to the old version of Twitter, where when you searched for something, it was very obvious that you were in a search page at this moment. And as you scrolled through the search page, it was obvious that the content uh, could be adjusted based on the particular uh, filter that you desired here at the top. In the new version, again, there's no context. As we've discussed this problem when you're scrolling on a particular user's page, you don't know you're scrolling on their page. And here, you don't know that you're scrolling in the page, which is a reset of results for a search for Edward Snowden. Um, you actually aren't even able to 
switch midway through the type of content that you're looking for. You have to, I guess, scroll up to the top and then change it up there. Now we'll see how it responds in mobile mode. In mobile mode, it actually, ooh, that's slick. It actually looks really good in, um, here, let me just make this a little bit more narrower and see how it handles. So this works really well, eh? this new version here where um, you can pull this left and right. Uh, YouTube does this too in a lot of other apps, but this implementation is really well done actually. Um, and so this is optimized well for mobile. It just needs to uh, also have that functionality extended to how it functions on desktop so that you can uh, say, have that same experience. And we need to get rid of all this garbage out here. I understand why Twitter is trying to do this. They probably want to increase um, user interactions or something to that effect. Um, trying to make so you follow more people or click on trends, but I just don't think this is the right way to do it. I do think probably putting this in line in search results is better. Um, or at least that's how Facebook gets away with stuff a lot. Now, if you, I want to draw your attention to something else. In the old version here, when I would click on a particular item, um, I would immediately be able to say who is showing me this item, what the item is, and whether I follow them or not. And this was really important because you might see something, not be following the person, and then follow them right away. In the old version, sorry, in this new version of Twitter, unfortunately, the information, the follow button, has been removed from the content, and it's been placed in the part of Twitter which we no longer look, which is way, way, way over here. Remember, I'm no longer looking here at all. And so... Um, it's less obvious that I'm not following this person, whereas when before the follow button was integrated right beside the content that I'm visually looking at, it was much easier to um, want to follow them. Now, out of curiosity, how does this work on a narrow screen? Um, look, oh, come on, don't tell me. On a narrow screen, the follow button doesn't even appear? What? What? Yeah, so there's no follow button on the narrow screen. I can't believe that. All right, so so it is. All right, and now if I want to go back, see, I, it's it's not as intuitive in here, uh, right? I, I I forget where I am. Oh, I am. Am I inside of? Uh, whereas here, it's very obvious. Right now, I'm looking at a particular tweet panel, and I'm inside of the search, and so I can just click here, and I'm back to where I was. And here, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, how did I get here? And so, because you don't have that surrounding context to know how you got here, so you have to click back, and now you know, okay, I was here. And so, in some ways, when you're thinking about an addiction part perspective, I feel that being able to see the content I came from makes me want to, makes me know where I am, and therefore click out of this content and continue to scroll through this other content. Whereas when I'm in this case, and there's nothing, there's no more content to scroll, and I have to physically click to go back, I may either exit the browser or just go back home or click search. Um, I've lost connection with where I came from in, achieve, in looking at this content. Let's look here at the filters. So before, what you used to be able to do is on the filters, uh, filter it so that you only saw people you followed, um, those which were near you, and in different languages. And that was kind of nice to be able to say, all right, this is a trending topic. I want to see all the people that um, I follow, what they're saying about it. In the new version of Twitter, there doesn't appear to actually be the capability to add those filters on. Let's see, search settings, which reveal sensitive topic, remove blocked and muted accounts. And so did we have those search settings before? Ah, oh, yeah, search settings. See, but at least in the past, I had the button, I had the option to click save or cancel. Now, whether you need to have a cancel button and an exit icon, some would say it's redundant, some would say, well, you know, there's probably no harm in having both of them, so you might as well just have them both. Um, but I did like the idea of having the save button. Whereas in this new version, if you change a setting, it's not entirely obvious to maybe all users that if you just click outside of this panel, that it's gonna retain your, your settings. 
or if you uh, change the settings and then you click exit, that it's actually gonna exit and save, unlike the exits and other pop-ups, which were exits and cancels. Do you, do you see the discrepancy there on how uh, the exit button and its functionality to either save your change or to not save your change varies throughout the app? So that should be standardized. Um, one of the things which is a bit hilarious, in my opinion, is that the word cancel has been added to every single pop-up. Or not every single, but a significant number of these pop-ups have the word cancel. Is this actually necessary? And I would love to, I mean, I'm just a random guy using the software here, but maybe there, Twitter did some amazing research and found that people didn't know what to do when a pop-up was like this and they wanted to close it without activating any of the features. Maybe they didn't know they could click outside without clicking the word cancel. On the other hand, was cancel just thrown in here? Because if so, and it's not actually nece necessary, uh, I think this is a distraction entirely um, and should be removed. Um, and then if it is necessary, why does this button, this page here not have a cancel? Anyway, um, let's go to search filters. Okay, so we actually have lost these search filters that we've discussed, which used to exist, no longer. If we go to advanced filter, we'll compare that advanced filter to this advanced filter. And here we are. In the old advanced filter, you could obviously see the problems with it, right? The words in the left column were far too far away from the actual text entry fields. If anything, at minimum, these should have been right justified so that the word was closer to the text entry field. And of course, as you realize, it's definitely preferable in mo almost all cases to have the word and the label directly above the content field, um, which is how, in some ways, Twitter has shifted to putting the label above the content entry field, but in this new advanced uh, panel, it's visually very, very, very busy. Here, it, when you can eyeball this, and within you know three seconds, you know exactly what filters you have available. Your eye just goes down this list. Here, your eye doesn't know what to uh, look in. You keep seeing the word example, example, dogs, example, dogs, example, happy hour, when in fact what you're looking for are the words, all these words, this exact phrase, any of these words. And so the, th the, the labels which you actually care about are hard to read because they're the same color as the explanatory, as the explanation, but they're actually lying against an... Uh, colored background, so therefore the contrast ratio between your label word you care about is actually less than the contrast ratio of the example word, meaning that the examples stand out more than the labels, which is backwards. Why, I mean, the examples could have just been inside of the boxes, and the label sat on top in larger text, I feel. And then this is discongruent entirely. And it's forcing me to actually type in the numbers respecting this type of a date field. Whereas before, at least you had a date picker. Um, it looks like we're also losing the ability to sort by place. And we're also uh, losing the ability to sort by language. All right. Now, now, and the search button is up in the top right. You know, it would it be nice if search was in the bottom right and if there was maybe a, a static panel, which would always be there, even when you scroll up or down. So they're always, the, the ability to search was always there, um, but it looks like that's just the trend. And we'll expand that. Let's compare just a few other overall uh, impressions of the new interface. As you can see, the old interface would always style itself so that your text was in the middle. If you had a wide browser, it would lay the who to follow and these panels equally on either side. And then as you brought the browser in, and notice the spacing around here is equal all the way throughout between these panels. And then if you brought your panel in, it would jump the text here down to these panels here. And then you could scroll through it and as such. Now in the new version, what we see is if we go back home, 
that unfortunately, none of these panels actually line up. There seem to be different widths, unfortunately, between them, which is uh, not good. And the default is that the text is not centered and it's off to the left. And this panel is quite wide and it's on the right. And I think in general that my preference is for this panel to be on the left and for the text to sit more close to the right side of the screen. And the re reason for that, I haven't entirely figured this out and I'm sure people actually study this with eye tracking, but when I, if I pull up a, a note file and were to be having Microsoft Word or some sort of a note document on one side of the screen, by default, I always put it on the right side. And then I would always put the other content, uh, if you're copying from something else, on the left side. And I was talking to a few other people, and it sounds like they do this as well. And for me, by putting the content that I'm drafting on the right, it means that every sentence that you start, you're starting it actually in the middle of the screen. So if you're looking at a neutral gaze at your uh, device, your eyes are right here in the middle area, and that's where you start your content. If you were to put this content on the far left, your eyes have to essentially look not in the neutral area, but by default, your eyes have to start on the far left side of the screen. And so it feels like you're looking diagonally across your device. It's not as comfortable a gaze. And so for this reason, on text entry, I prefer to always put the text entry window on the right. And this makes sense because now I'm starting my gaze in a neutral position. And then I extend my gaze as required to the end of the screen, but then you come back to the middle. In a similar manner, you can imagine that it may be desirable that text, which you're reading in a newsfeed, initiates itself on the as close to the middle of the screen as possible. If you were to be drawing a line from the middle of the screen here down, you can see that the majority of these posts, four-fifths of them, are displayed on the left side of the screen. And so your eye, by default, is starting here, one quarter of the way into the screen, which is actually getting quite close to the edge of the screen, which has the feeling that you're viewing content from uh, having to look diagonally across your, your screen. Whereas if you imagine that these right panels, which I absolutely detest because they're so large and obnoxious and bold and don't tell me of anything which is inf interesting. Um, maybe they're bringing money in for Twitter, but there's other ways. Uh, these pan if these panels were on the right side, then your eye would be starting, so if we'll imagine that this panel uh, is starting here, so your content is starting right here, and the content goes from here to here, if you imagine that, your eye is starting again now closer to the midline of the screen, which is where I believe is the preferred place to, to do so. And so that is personally why I prefer these panels to be on the left, is so that you can read uh, with the eye as close to the middle of the screen as possible. Here it always feels that I'm looking cross-eyed uh, to the left side of the screen whenever the, the main panel is on this side. Um, let's see. A few other interesting things. So let's just open up this panel here. And why don't we just open up um, one post. What you can see is that by opening this post, it actually removes some of the information which was being displayed before. Before it told me there's six comments, 125 and 254. When you open the post, you actually no longer have those details in the bottom here displayed. It shows you the retweets and the likes, but it doesn't display that information with, e with each one of them. Whereas before, uh, in the old Twitter, when you would open up a post, it would show you that information right at the same time. Um, now, in the old Twitter, 
Uh, let's just compare the two again here. Uh, I always liked being able to click through on this number here to load up the original post if I wanted to get to a post. And it's nice that it would display the date and the time in a uh, pop-up. In the new version, and of course you could always, uh, you could click on it and then you could click through with, uh, what is it, command click if you wanted to go directly to that tweet. And the new version, there's no longer the pop-up, or there is, but it's not styled. It's just using the system default. So I think it would be better um, to, again, style it as before. One of the other things which is a bit uh, confusing about the um, new Twitter is that when you load up the interface here and you're looking at this top bar, we see search and we see search. And so, and when you click on search, you actually can't search from here. And so I, I realize why these icons were pulled here, and this is because it's reproducing the mobile application, but uh, it's just something to be considerate of. of is there a, a better way to have um, crafted this particular magnifying glass? In the old version of Twitter, if you wanted to access your account, you could either from the home page here, click on the account here, or you could click the icon and then click uh, profile. In the new version, there is no longer uh, on the home page displayed a shortcut to your account nor information about your account's metrics. Again, as I mentioned, this is hidden. So you have to click up here and then click that way to your account. Given how wide this new button, this bar is, one option could have been that if you click the photo part of this selector, that it hyperlinks you directly to your account page. And then if you click your name or the drop down, then it brings up this side panel. And as was already mentioned before, in the new version of Twitter, your eye does not know where to latch onto when you're looking at this information. It's all one large horizontal blob, and it takes longer to read, and you consume less information. Whereas in the old version of Twitter, because it was all left justified in very short lines, it was easy to look down the row to get an understanding of this information and context. And as mentioned, the uh, actual profile picture is much smaller. So there you have it. We've gone through and we've reviewed now uh, the new version of Twitter for desktop, or at least as released through a browser. Unfortunately, although it makes a lot of great steps forward as far as the experience on a mobile phone or mobile tablet, the uh, new version of Twitter, as is running in the browser on desktop, seems to have taken a step backwards in many uh, common sense functionality. I realize that this is likely a very early draft and there'll be continuing improvements as it uh, is continued to be released in the uh, coming timelines. But there are a lot of core functionalities such as tweeting, which has been now uh, removed and you can't tweet from any page. You can only tweet if you uh, get back to the right type of a page to tweet from. Can I tweet from here? Uh, nope. I still can't tweet from here. Wait, yes, discard. You can only tweet from here. So you know, a lot of a lot of core common sense functionality has been unfortunately reduced. Uh, visually, the screen has been cluttered uh, quite significantly, and a lot of i uh, of um, uh, named icons and named functions, which made sense, have been tweet to message have been replaced. Uh, exclusively with uh, icons without any particular explanation of what they do. And the labels which would hover, which would appear when you hover on them, um, no longer are there. This transition is a bit slow. The word following to unfollowing, it would have been nicer if this was just a much more snappy uh, response. Oh, one last thing. The line spacing here between the username and the Twitter handle, I don't think it's enough. In the older version, there was a little bit more generous spacing it appeared. And as you can see, this uh, follows you badge is a little bit too crammed in here. 
All right, there we go. I think that's it for now. There's probably other things which will come to mind as I uh, use this a bit more. I do like how the how this button is wider when it's expanded and then shrinks down when it's narrower. I just dislike that the actual functionality of the button, tweeting versus replying, actually changes, right? Because before, if you were to uh, click on someone that you wanted to reply to, it was very obvious that you were replying because there was a set, uh, there was a reply box. But that reply functionality now uh, looks so similar to the tweet functionality um, that I, I think that something's gone uh, is missing. I understand probably why the, the the it's been merged together just from the perspective of being able to do this on mobile and being able to uh, render the same type of a object if you're replying versus tweeting. Um, but I think it's just. Um, that there could have been other ways to do this without having to have uh, one button do both functions. All right, now I think that we're finally done for today. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing this type of uh, deep dive into user interface design. And I entirely realize that what we're looking at today from Twitter is probably just one iteration on a continued process of uh, improving their product. But it is, uh, you know, at times fun to uh, beat up on the on the the big companies, the, the, the companies with uh, enormous employee bases, lots of funding, uh, huge user bases. You kind of expect, in some ways, that they every product they put out is uh, perfect. And as I've said, I have really high praise for the m mobile application, or at least the iOS version, which I've used extensively, and. I just wish that their desktop version uh, lived up to those standards. If you were uh, watching this from uh, either my brother's design company or uh, with the IT team here in Kenya, uh, I let me know what your thoughts were and uh, I'd be curious for any feedback.